Good afternoon everybody. I thought I'd just um, take the opportunity to sort of go through a bit of an idea that I'm having in terms of my new trailer build. And uh, this is number two of our video. Um, so as you can see, we're going to go for a completely different style of trailer this time. Uh, no longer the dog trailer, but we're actually going for a fifth wheel or a, a gooseneck trailer. Um, Run through some things, obviously conventional tipper, um, rated at 2.8 ton there. It's a uh, 3 metre toolbox. Um, one thing that I have found is that I just don't have enough room uh, for the tools that I've got. And obviously still using the same twin cab ute, uh, or truck as the states call them, um, but just modifying the toolbox to suit. So one of the reasons that I've decided to go this way is that I've had one issue with the ute pulling this particular dog trailer that I've actually built. And that is that the stability control when you go around corners gets upset by the dog controller, the dog trailer because you've got two pivot points. Um, so as a result, it hits the it automatically uh, limits the acceleration on the vehicle when you're going not in a straight line. So it's been a pain in the butt. I've sent it to um, four times the local Isuzu dealer, and they're as useless as yeah, just I wouldn't, yeah, I won't be going back there. Um, but uh, so as a result, I did some research, and I believe that it's just because of the programming in the Ute, which is an interesting uh, thing in the sense of that uh, two pivot points really make it difficult in that situation. Um, but uh, so the reason why I've gone for a uh, gooseneck this time is that I have an issue where uh, steel uh, that we get is um, is eight meters in length in Australia. Um, so I want a trailer that I can put eight meter lengths on legally, and on this application I can do that. Um, so it, it, it measures about 7.8 metres long. Uh, one, one of the biggest um, criticisms that a lot of people have got about um, gooseneck trailers is the fact that they, they effectively tie up the back of a ute so that you've got no um, toolboxes. What I've come up with is I'm going to have some low slung uh, toolboxes but I'm going to make the gooseneck really high, so it's actually higher than the top of the ute, and then have our pole that comes down on our ball that sits in the back of the ute here. Um, the reason that is the toolboxes are low slung, so when the trail is not connected, you've still got toolboxes, but even when they're connected, you st the actual high slung um, gooseneck actually goes over the top of the toolboxes. So um, this is what we're designing. Um, I've been looking at different ways of doing things, uh, obviously our first video we looked at the chassis um, toolboxes uh, we're going to have the same principle as our new one where we've got three quarter toolboxes so um, the left hand side because obviously in Australia we drive on the right hand side or the right way uh, um, much to uh, America's uh, distrust uh, but uh, so we're going to have the toolboxes coming up mainly from the left um, so that that is the plan um, so uh, this is what we've um, sort of come up with. Um, we are going to be rolling out the process of making the chassis over the next uh, few weeks. So you'll be able to see what we're doing, how we're connecting things, how we're getting our strength in things. So let us know if you've got any questions.